Okay, so thank you everyone for uh, joining us on today's webinar. Um, today we'll be discussing, you know, a modern approach with CompuVerti uh, software uh, and super uh, micro hardware to build a, uh, you know, a storage platform that has, you know, all the bells, bells and whistles that you can expect from a modern, uh, from modern storage. So uh, my name is Omar. I'm the GM uh, and founder of Disty Logics. Um, you know, uh, I, I, you may have, you may know Disty Logics. We, uh, you know, we are a distributor of software technologies around virtualization, backup, and disaster recovery, as well as uh, software-defined storage. Uh, we're based here in Dubai. Um, I'm actually joined by um, the regional business development manager from Supermicro, Mr. Fahad Dalul, um, as well as uh, uh, Chris, who is the sales manager at uh, CompuVerd, and Sindusha, who is the technical engineer. Um, Sindusha will be taking us through the, uh, uh, the, the software solution that um, CompuVerd, CompuVerd has to offer. Um, so, you know, as uh, the distributor of CompuVerd, you know, we wanted to put together a, uh, an event to give people a new look, a different way of approaching um, their storage and how they uh, uh, look at, you know, the, the, the storage set challenges that they're coming across. Um, so, you know, our strategy has always been to bring something new to the market, to bring, you know, innovative or niche technologies to the market that uh, can bring in new value and bring new choice to, uh, to the customers. So, uh, you know, about a year ago, we started looking into software defined storage to, um, you know, what we saw in the market is that in this market, most people are going for an appliance based approach, you know, either from the monolithic storage solutions or even with some of the modern things that are happening in storage with hyperconverge or converge, we're still going, going about it with the appliance throughout. So what we said is, you know, why don't we do something different and bring to this market the software? I mean, at the end of the day, the software is the intelligence that runs the, uh, at the end of the day, the, the, the software is the, en is the engine that runs this uh, complete system. So we started looking at these types of technology um, and finally came upon uh, CompuVerd uh, as an amazing tool to provide, you know, whether, you know, you want a hyper-converged approach or a, uh, you know, to keep separate the uh, compute and the storage uh, in a hyperscale, you know, very scalable manner. Um, these guys are able to achieve, you know, uh, big performance. You know, and when you combine it with commodity hardware such as Supermicro, which we found has a has an amazing selection, uh, you know, a huge amount of choices um, in terms of what you build. You know, no longer are you tied to a uh, a storage platform that you know dictates. You know, this is what you need. You know, everybody's environment and 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 requirements are different. So why not approach it in that way? Um, so together with uh, Supermicro and CompuVerd, we found that we can put together a very, very competitive um, system, um, competitive in, the term, in terms of performance, in terms of, you know, being able to scale and adding and consuming only what you need, uh, as well as reducing, um, you know, costs greatly um, and more so as you, as the environment expands. So uh, in today's uh, webinar, we're going to actually look at Supermicro. So uh, Fahad will get to present a little bit uh, on, on Supermicro and what Supermicro is doing. Then we'll move it over to, uh, to CompuVert to go over the, uh, the technology, uh, to go over uh, you know, a quick demo of the product. You know, I'll, I'll then also share with you guys uh, uh, some of the combined bundles that we've done. Uh, specifically in the VNAS, you know, we have also hyperconverged bundles that we will uh, uh, probably uh, share in a few weeks. Uh, but today, I, I wanted to share with you guys some of the VNAS uh, bundles that we have, um, and then we'll leave it to uh, questions um, and give you guys answers to your questions. So, without further ado, I'm going to pass it to uh, to Fed to take us through uh, the Supermicro. Thank you, Omar. Thank you for the introduction. Hear me? Sure. Uh, thank you, Omar, for the introduction. Uh, <clears throat> like you said, uh, good morning, good morning, everyone. Um, my name is Fahid Dalul. I'm uh, the Regional Business Development Manager 
actually I've just uh, I've joined Supermicro about uh, a couple of months back uh, to look after uh, the Middle East region, uh, except for Saudi Arabia where we already have somebody there. And like Omar is saying, I mean, uh, we uh, as Supermicro, uh, we we also from the hardware and storage perspective, we want to uh, expand. Um, in the region, that's why we are working closely with uh, solution providers uh, such as uh, Distilogix and CompuWord to, uh, to, bring, to bring you with uh, uh, some of the solutions that Supermicro really is working on. Just to give you a brief history on, uh, on Supermicro and what we do. Um, uh, Supermicro is uh, really a US-based company and it started like 22 years back and we were main components uh, side in terms of like motherboards uh, supplies heat sinks and things like that then um, super micro has evolved into not only from the component into systems from server uh, compute systems and storage and even today we are into uh, complete solutions where we, we work with uh, very closely with the solution partners where we provide a complete solution from in terms of food storage and even on the software defined layer such as that is such as the way that we do with the uh, computer on the software design uh, software defined storage uh, we are uh, uh, it's it's like a, a, a we have grown where we, we are not uh, we are not really centric now in uh, the company has grown over the past few years and uh, the growth in fy16 by itself we've grown by five percent a number of employees has increased to close to three thousand by the way now right now as if to uh, fy17 uh, uh, and uh, supermicro has expanded uh, into multiple continents uh, in the U.S., in, in Europe, and uh, even now in the Far East, where we have uh, a global we have a manufacturing there uh, also. See, if you look, uh, like I said, I mean we've we've grown up in the last couple of years. Uh, uh, we now we have a. Uh, and it's an operation where, which is there in the Netherlands that's been there for the last couple of years. And uh, today, even our uh, Asia Science uh, Technology and Park is expanded, and we are adding like more and more facilities into that one. And a few days back, we've announced Supermicro in Germany. They've announced what is called Green Computing Park in San Jose. Basically, this park it's uh, it's built based on a green technology from A to Z in, in terms of everything that is related to green, uh, yeah, uh, green technology. Uh, <clears throat> because at Supermicro, we do really care very much about uh, having an optimum uh, <clears throat> uh, efficiency into, into the hardware that we, uh, that we produce. Like I said, we started in the OEM business like 20, uh, 23 years back, and we were making lots of hardware components. That's why probably you recognize some of the names here in this slide in the OEM, for example, Juniper and Nutanix and Citrix. Where these guys, Nutanix, they run 100% in Supermicro hardware. All, all the Nutanix appliances basically are uh, from Supermicro, uh, and uh, uh, the software is running on top of Supermicro. Also, we have verticals in the in the in, in the medical area, uh, like Siemens and Toshiba, that we work these big uh, X-ray machines and uh, seismic machines, where they require lots of uh, graphical processing units, and uh, for uh, for uh, medical applications and even DDI applications. Also, Supermicro are in the large uh, data centers. We work closely. We have uh, uh, certified architectures with VMware. Uh, 
uh, we work closely with the uh, in data center providers like yeah in Yahoo Japan line uh, uh, software layer also in the states uh, we have uh, we have Twitter and we have LinkedIn and uh, Facebook here we are in, in the core of the uh, that of um, these players this is how supermicro is like I said, I and mean, when we started in '93, uh, we were uh, mainly on the component side, oh, from motherboards to uh, power supplies and fans and things like. That. Then uh, it evolved and started into uh, server system innovation in 2003, uh, to, between 2003 and 2012, where we started building uh, the different hardware for different uh, applications from uh, from the, what we call it, uh, the 1U to the 2U to the uh, blade, blade hardware. Uh, then in 2013, that we, are, uh, we moved into data center solution uh, where we tied up with uh, lots of uh, software and uh, uh, service provider like Microsoft, uh, uh, like Red Hat, OpenStack, where we built three track solution uh, from compute storage and on the on the software layer. We work closely with these guys on the software layer, and we provide a total solution to our customers. Like some of the what we call them the rack solutions that we are uh, we are working with. Here it shows like a presentation of well, one complete track with, that has that has everything in it from the hardware, from the store, uh, from the compute storage, even the internal networking within the rack, uh, the management of the rack um, to run to run uh, uh, <clears throat> to run uh, different applications from VMware. Uh, uh, for example, in the software defined solution, uh, solutions like CompuBird, uh, Nixenta, VMware, Ceph, uh, uh, or OpenStack, um, or even uh, HPC, uh, we work closely with the, the, the Hadoop solutions. Um, so so we, we evolved not only from providing only the hardware or the compute and storage part, we, we work closely with these software defined uh, uh, provider to provide a total, we, what we call it, a total rack solution where, where the customer gets from Supermicro a ready built rack with everything uh, inside that rack running from the software layer to the network layer to the compute layer to the storage layer all optimized, certified by both Supermicro and uh, software provider. <clears throat> Today, uh, we, are, we have like uh, the world's best server and storage product line uh, uh, from the 1U and the 2U servers to the Twin Pro, uh, Ten Pro, and uh, for you, Fat Twin, where we have multiple nodes, where we can run multiple nodes in one U and two U chassis to the Super Blade and the Max. Uh, <clears throat> uh, these are the the Blade servers, uh, and we have the 90 bay and 60 bay JPods where we you can expand you can expand your uh, storage to multiple of terabytes and petabytes uh, <clears throat> uh, within uh, within the uh, also we have uh, also supermicro are in um, in the embedded internet of things product lines uh, where we build small gateways that are really targeted at um, smaller smaller installations for iot and on the edge uh, where where the where it communicates with the end devices and then they send the information back to the cloud and to the data center. So, well, <laughs> why Supermicro? This is uh, this is uh, uh, the last uh, slide that I 
uh, one super micro, like I said, I mean, we, we, today we are, we are not only on the compute and the storage side, we are uh, very engineering. The portfolio, we have a, a large range uh, of portfolio. The reason for that is we, we like to customize our solution based on the requirement the customer and the solution. We, we are not, we don't really sell only one type of uh, configurations uh, to our customers and uh, asking them to, uh, uh, to abide to that configuration. We have a huge range of portfolio and the reason for that, we, we want to provide really the right solution to, uh, to our customers and our partners. All the hardware, everything we use inside our is all our standards, the same thing. We, we don't use any proprietary firmwares on our, for example, on the hard disk or anything like that, where we, we have to tie up our customers to the hard drives. We sell, so, which means the customer will, will have to pay like 10 times the cost of hard drive, which could be acquired from Western Digital or uh, or Hitachi for much less price. Uh, we very uh, uh, one of the uh, very early uh, we work closely with uh, the CPU providers like Intel and AMD. Uh, that's why uh, Supermicro is one of the very first to market uh, new CPUs. One asked by uh, uh, Intel or AMD because we work closely with them and we always have we always have uh, hardware hardware that is ready for uh, uh, for the new CPUs before it's really launched or even uh, uh, given to any uh, to any vendor on the market. So this is the this is the, the message that I wanted really to give on Supermicro. Uh, if you have any questions or anything, probably you can ask at the end of the uh, uh, webinar. And um, uh, hopefully, you enjoy the rest of the presentation. Amar, uh, it's uh, back to you now. Uh, yeah, thank uh, thank you for that, uh, Fahad. I hope you know this uh, shows everyone. You know, I mean, the the advantage really of uh, Super Micro is you're you're buying you know very solid uh, hardware. You know, without having to pay the premium of a, you know, of a of a big brand name, and uh, you know, you're also getting, you know, the the flexibility. You're not, you know, being locked into, uh, you know, a certain system. Uh, and I think it'll. Uh, this is a good leeway to, you know, talk about the, uh, you know, for storage. You know, to talk about the software defined storage solution that will be able to run on this uh, on this hardware. So uh, I think Sindusha, you're going to be uh, presenting the. Uh, uh, the computer yeah. piece. Exactly. Sure. Uh, so let me just share my screens. Great. Uh, so thank you, Omar and Fahad, for the uh, presentation and the introduction. Uh, my name is Sindesha, and uh, I will be taking you through a short introduction of uh, CompuVed, the software, and also take you through the GUI uh, just to give you an overview of how easy it would be to manage your storage solution when you're using CompuVed. Um, so CompuVed, we are from Sweden. So at the moment we're located in Karlskrona, which is in the south of Sweden. And uh, we have been in the market since 2008. And uh, we have a lot of global partners all around the world uh, with whom we partner up and operate with and uh, Omar. Uh, is our partner in the UAE at the moment. Uh, talking about the software itself, uh, so you can install the software on up to three or uh, starting with three or four servers and uh, configure them to be a part of the cluster. Uh, we have been using a lot of Supermicro components down in our database, uh, data center where we have about uh, 300 servers a couple of which are uh, Supermicro. So we've been testing a lot with Supermicro and uh, we know that we are a really good fit together. Uh, so when you install CompuVerd on your hardware and uh, you configure all the servers to be a part of the same cluster, you can 
expect to have a file system, an object store, and a block storage in one package. Uh, when you want to deploy the software, you have a couple of options where you can choose which way you want to deploy it. The first one being scale out storage, where you are going to install CompuWord directly on bare metal servers. So when you, this is the simplest way of deploying CompuWord. So you start out of with three nodes and then when you have CompuWord installed on all your servers, you will have a single namespace that is spanning over all of them. So whatever you're reading or writing to your first server is exactly what the 10th or the 13th server in your cluster will be looking at. So we're strictly synchronous in those terms. So all your nodes are always looking at the same data. Uh, we also believe in a pretty flat architecture. So we try to keep everything simple. Uh, you have three different layers in CompuWare when you talk in terms of architecture. The bottom layer being the storage layer where we deal as an object store. And this is what gives us our flexibility and our ability to scale up to thousands of nodes without any limit. Then we have the virtual file system layer on top of the object store. And then we have the protocol layer on top of that. So at the moment, we support most common protocols such as SMB, NFS, iSCSI, both OpenStack, Swift, and Cinder, and Amazon S3 as well. So it's completely up to you, and you can choose which protocols uh, you would like to use with your system and what kind of applications you already have currently running. The second form of deployment that you can have is a hyperconvert solution. where you're committed. So with the hyperconvert setup, what you do is you will first install your hypervisor of choice. We are compatible with uh, VMware SXI, KVM, uh, Microsoft Hyper-V and Zen. So you can choose which kind of hypervisor you would like to have. So you would first install that on your server and then spin up one virtual machine where CompuWord will be installed. Once you do this for all your uh, hypervisor, all your servers, then you will go ahead and then configure figure them into a cluster similar like you would do with a bare metal setup. So with the hyperconvert system as well, you will still have the same functionality you would have when you are going to a basic scale out setup. You will still be able to scale. You will still have the same file system. All your virtual machines will be able to share data between each other. And um, it's as simple as uh, you will have if you have installed uh, the software on a bare metal setup. The third form of uh, setup that you could do with CompuWord is a metro cluster. So you could set up both the basic scale out or the hyperconvert solutions as a metro. And the reason that you will be doing a metro is you want to spread your nodes across two physically different data centers and then be able to lose one complete data center and still be up and running. So with the Metro class restrictions that you need to keep in mind in terms of networking. So that is that both your data centers should be on the, uh, on the same LAN and they should have a low latency uplink of uh, something that is lower than five milliseconds. And after you have taken care of that, both your data data centers will be mirrored to your secondary data center. All your nodes will be active active. So you can at the same time write to both the secondary and primary data center um, constantly as well. And then you're not only able to lose a couple of nodes within one data center, which we take care of using Erasure coding, something that I will mention later on and explain it to you a little bit, but you're also able to lose one complete data center. So, and still be up and running. So we give you the ability to lose uh, one whole data center using Metro Cluster. And then we have a setup called Hybrid Cloud, which will be releasing at end of Q1 or the beginning of Q2 this year. And this is a much more flexible setup than Metro. So you could have completely independent data centers in different locations in different cities. Um, and then you're able to selectively share data between them. So just giving you a small example, you could have a centralized head office or headquarters in city A where all your 
did I start? And then you could have a couple of small sales offices in different cities. And then the headquarters can choose to selectively share only sales information to these offices. And whatever information you're sharing will be then synchronized with each other. So this gives you the flexibility of working with both public and private clouds and then synchronizing your data between them as well. Talking about a couple of features of CompuVerd, we are extremely scalable. So you can scale, when you start off with your uh, servers, you can start with three or four nodes and then you can scale up by adding additional disks to these nodes. Or you can also choose to scale out by adding additional nodes. So you can at any time during your operations when you think you want to add more compute or more storage capacity, City, you can just install another server with CompuVerd and then configure it to be a part of your cluster. Real, um, this scaling out feature, you can do it while your uh, storage solution is up and running. You really do not need to take it down for any maintenance. And even when you add more servers to it, it uh, the solution will seamlessly uh, scale out. Uh, another uh, uh, positive thing about scaling out is since the architecture is so flat, since uh, when you're scaling with more servers or more nodes, you not only gain by capacity, but you also gain by performance. This is primarily because CompuVerd, all the nodes are same. Uh, there are no special nodes, no special metadata servers or no special master nodes. So all the nodes are sharing uh, the functionality that is within the software. So the more nodes you add, the more pairs for us to work with and uh, the better performance you gain. Um, the solution is primarily hardware agnostic. So you can choose to use CompuVerd with Supermicro or with any other existing hardware that you already have. Uh, the only thing that you need to keep in mind is you should have an x86 server and in each server you should have a storage, a cache and a boot disk. Uh, the numbers that you see here are a couple of minimum requirements that we would like you to stick by so that uh, when you're starting off to use CompuVerd you at least have a memory of 12 gigs and a 20 gig boot disk and so on and so forth. Uh, when talking about performance, uh, CompuVerd is, as you understand, is the software part. So it, you are also able to uh, design your setup in terms of hardware. So you can choose to go as fast as you want, as high performance as you want, as well as choose to keep it as modest as you like based on your requirements. So these performance numbers that you see here are what we try to do when we were comparing CompuVerd with EMC Isilon. So SpecSFS is a tool uh, that emulates about 10,000 users on your storage solution that are doing random things. So they are a public benchmark and they have results from different vendors published on their website. So we picked up one from EMC Isilon and tried to emulate the same or similar hardware that they had, but using super micro hardware uh, with a couple of differences that while they had InfiniBand and we had two additional nodes. And with a similar setup, we were able to achieve a performance of 540,000 IOPS, while if I remember right, EMC had around 360,000 IOPS. So this was a very modest system and these results are maybe an year or two years old now. And um, now we have made new results with SPEC SFS 2014, which, will able to, uh, which are able to give you more specific numbers in terms of your use cases. So if you're looking at VDA or VDI, we can give you more concrete numbers on how, what kind of a performance you can um, expect in such use cases. Uh, these are some compatibility numbers about our protocols. So one good thing to mention about CompuVerd is that we don't use any open source code or any third party, um, third party products within CompuVerd and everything has been developed in-house by, by us from scratch using C and C++. What this allows us to do is it gives us the control of our product. So if you would like to, uh, if you have any changes that you would like to make or any specializations that you want us to do, it is easier for us to do that for you. And these numbers that you see here are a couple of compatibility numbers comparing our versions of protocols to Linux, Red Hat, and Windows Server. So as you can see, we are doing a 
lot better than uh, CentOS or Red Hat in terms of SMB and iSCSI. And um, we do NFS uh, 4.0 much better than Windows Server and iSCSI as well. Talking about the reliability of the whole solution because it is pretty important for your storage infrastructure to be up and running. Um, we are a high availability solution in terms that all our nodes are active active. So if you have 10 nodes in your cluster, all of them will be a potential gateway into your storage solution. As I mentioned, all the nodes are synchronous. So whatever you're writing is what all the other nodes are seeing. And then you have virtual IP, which is a, a failover mechanism that uh, we would like you to have if you want to always have 100% uptime. So what virtual IP does is, let's say during app storage server has failed, with virtual IP, we will migrate all these ongoing reads and writes to another healthy node in the background. So the end user will not really notice any downtime or will not notice that they are node in your storage cluster has gone down basically. So with virtual IP, this also allows you to make rolling upgrades. So you're able to update the firmware on your solution without really needing to take it down for any maintenance uh, purposes. Um, I, whenever, when I will take you through the GUI, I can also show you a live example of how virtual IP works and uh, how the end user will be able to uh, look at your cluster basically. And then talking about the reliability of the solution, we are a self-healing cluster. So we have a patented heartbeat solution within CompuWed uh, through which all the nodes are talking to each other. So when there is anything going wrong with the disk, maybe it's running slow, maybe the disk has failed, or maybe the whole node has completely failed for that sense. We are able to detect that and we are also able to self-heal from the loss. So we are able to replicate the data that was lost with that disk or that was lost with that node. So uh, we are able to self-heal with any or from any such issues that you have in your cluster. Then you also have the possibility of making snapshots uh, and you can make up to 255 snapshots for each and every policy that you want to create on your cluster and you're always able to revert back if there are any unnecessary changes. And then Erasure Coding is, uh, you have a couple of different options within Erasure Coding, a plus ones and a plus two option, which dictates how many nodes you can lose in your storage cluster and still be up and running. So when I take you through the GUI, I can give you some more information about that. And uh, my last slide before going to the GI are a couple of more features about CompuWed. So we are fully flash compliant. Uh, if you're using SSDs, we will make intelligent use of the cache. You can also go all flash with CompuWed. So you can get rid of your cache layer. Uh, so instead of having three different, uh, two different layers in CompuWed servers, that is the cache and the storage layer, you could completely get rid of the cache layer and then directly write to your storage layer, which are made up of flash devices or SSDs giving you even greater performance. We also support multi-tenancy, so you can create completely independent uh, tenants on your um, cluster. So you could have three or four different file systems that have their own unique configurations, their own unique ACLs, and have different customers accessing different file systems. Uh, you could also set up quotas on CompuWord, which will limit how much each folder or each file system will store on your cluster. And you can also uh, set up file policies to move data between your nodes. So you could, if you had a couple of old data, you could delete it. So you can set up retention policies. You can move them to a different, uh, let's say, slower nodes in your cluster. So you can move data within your cluster using file policies. And then finally, tiering is what you can use to group data between your nodes. So we have two kinds of tiering. One is automatic tiering that we do ourselves. So we try to keep the hot data or the data that you're using most often as close to the cache as possible. And the second kind of tiering that you could do is you could group your nodes into different tiers based on performance, if you like. So if you had a couple of really high performing nodes, you can put them in one tier and put your slow performing nodes in a different tier or just group them differently as you like. So based on what you have in your cluster, you can kind of manage uh, your requirements basically. 
So let me take you through the GUI, a really short trip, and uh, give you a glimpse of what you could expect if you're starting to use CompuWord. Uh, so this is the CompuWord management tool that you will be using when you want to interact with your cluster. So on the right, you see a lot of clusters that uh, I am managing using this GUI. But today for the purposes of this demo, I will be showing you a virtualized environment uh, that is having four nodes. And each node has one disk and one, uh, one storage disk and one cache disk. So there are different kinds of things that you can do using the GUI. Uh, the first thing would be the information that you're able to view. So you can look at the information when you have some reads or writes going on, we will have real time graphs and you're able to see how much performance your cluster is giving you or how much resources. are being used at a node level as well. So you so going back, you also have a statistics tab, which will give you some more interesting information about the kind of load that you're running on your system. Could be interesting if you want to understand your load and then optimize your storage cluster likewise. And then you have uh, the configuration tab where you can manage settings that you have. So you can enable or disable cache replication, uh, put up virtual IP, have some labels assigned to your nodes, give them some positionings, and then also set up alarms on your cluster. So you can have both email alerts going to your administrator as well as setting up as an MP traps. And then you have the file system. Uh, so when you have it configured, you will be looking at it like this. So you will be able to see the data both at filer, uh, sorry, folder and file level. You can make changes to the settings on the right panel here. So you're able to, uh, change the default erasure coding you set up. So as you can see here, I have a couple of options that are enabled. So I can choose like a maximum of three plus one and a couple of others that are grayed out. So depending on the number of, cluster, uh, number of nodes you have in your cluster, you could have more and more options that are available. So for a four node cluster, a three plus one is the maximum I can go. And what erasure coding basically does is help you determine how many nodes you can lose and still be up and running. So if I had erasure two plus two or a plus two in that sense, I'm able to lose two nodes in my cluster and still be able to up, uh, still be able to be up and running. And with the plus one erasure coding, I'm able to lose one node and still be able uh, and still be functioning as usual. So depending on the reliability you would like, you could choose different erasure codings, which will give you different um, efficiencies from your storage cluster. You could also choose to integrate your ACLs. You could, uh, if you have a currently working Active Directory or LDAP or NACER or Kerberos KDC, you could uh, incorporate those with CompuWord. Um, and going downwards to file system IPs, you're able to see the access IPs of your nodes through. Going to file system, you could enable, disable more protocols as you like. And if you're using NFS in particular, you also have the option of uh, using IP filters. Um, if you right click on your file system, you have a couple of more options that you could uh, set up policies. You can set up quotas, you can set up snapshots. We have the option of setting up both manual and automatic snapshots, or you can make file policies based on what you're looking for. Uh, then in the logs tab, you will have a couple of uh, logs just informing you what's happening in your cluster. And then in the maintenance tab, you can work with your cluster and see what's happening over here. And finally, in the license tab, you can have a look at your license and uh, see what features you have enabled and uh, how big you can grow, what protocols you have. So basically what you're allowed to do with a cluster. So anytime you can start small, you can start with three or four nodes. And then if you want to grow with your license, you can just update it. And uh, you can do that on the runtime without really needing to take it down. So just to show you virtual IP, because I think it's interesting for you guys to see that your cluster and storage is always up and running. Let me bring out uh, the Windows Explorer and show you the view of an end user. 
So at the moment, I'm accessing my first node, that is my 181th node, and this is what an end user will experience. So this is what he will see, a file share and a little, a couple of folders inside. So just to show you what would happen if this node died, let me just go to the maintenance tab and take it offline, just to simulate uh, the service being down. And bring that back up. So as you can see for the end user, if I was making some reads or writes, for example, let me just drag and drop a eh, duplicating it. So even if my node was offline, it will still, oh, I'm sorry, I'm copying a duplicate folder. So it wants me to uh, always confirm that I will have it there. But even with my node down and offline, I as an end user will really not see any downtime. So if I just refresh this, I will still be able to access my uh, cluster without noticing that anything has gone wrong at the background. So to the end users, they will really never see any downtime at all. So this is really interesting if you would like to have your cluster up and running and um, have it uh, up 24 seven basically. Um, so this was a short demo of CompuVerd, uh, showing you what you can do and what you can achieve with that. Uh, if you are interested to have a really in-depth view of the different features and different uh, functionalities, you are always welcome to contact Omar and set one up. And um, please do follow us on our social media, both LinkedIn and Twitter for regular updates and features of CompuVerd. With that, I think I would like to hand it over to Omar. Yeah, thank, thank you, Sindhu. Thank you, Sindhusha, for, uh, for taking us through that. Um, I hope that was helpful to everyone to uh, better understand how the software actually works. Um, so I, I'm gonna share my screen. Um, I just wanted to share with everyone uh, a couple of uh, reference architectures that we are um, you know, working on with uh, Supermicro and CompuVerd to offer um, the VNAS scenario. Um, so with, with CompuVert, as Sindusha explained, you can either have hyperconverge, you know, solution where uh, every node will have a hypervisor and combines the, the storage and the compute, or you can keep the storage separate from the compute in a VNAS scenario. Um, so VNAS is more traditional to what, uh, you know, most uh, traditional solutions like, uh, you know, NetApp are using. So, um, you know, we've we've made two two different types of systems. One uh, in a two U form factor, and the other in a four U form factor. So here um, is a slide on the uh, on the two U form factor. Um, you'll find that the CPU um, you know does not change you know for uh, for either. But you know, it's really it comes down to the capacity and um, and and the form factor. Um, you'll also note that, uh, you know, when we say a 32 TB system, it's, uh, you know, it's the raw capacity of the system. Um, CompuVert is using erasure coding. Uh, it's an, it is an, an advanced form of RAID whereby, you know, if you lose, you can select, you know, I can lose a node or two nodes and the system will still be up and running. So with a, with a system that starts at four, you know, the efficiency is going to be about 67%. So that's why you see here, you know, 21.44 TB uh, when, you know, you have a 32 TB raw. If you later on add another node, you know, or if you add, uh, you know, uh, a few more nodes, your efficiency is going to get better and better. So I think the next level up is 75% efficiency. Um, and then as you add nodes, you can go all the way up to about 92% efficiency, uh, you know, of the space that's, uh, that's usable. Um, so, uh, you know, we've made these bundles to make it easier for our customers or for our partners. Um, you know, as you know, we're a distributor, so we work with channel partners, depending on where, where, uh, where you might be, um, in the region. Uh, you know, so this makes it very easy to give an idea on this is the type of system that you can have, uh, you know, if you're looking for just a, a normal storage. Okay. Uh, this is the bigger, uh, you know, system, you know, 128, 256, 320 TB options. 
you know, you'll see there's different disk types that you can, uh, that you can go for. You know, one is using four TB disks, eight TB disks, 10 TB disks, uh, you know, uh, and different, you know, for the caching layer, you know, uh, it goes up in the term, you know, in terms of, uh, of, uh, you know, caching capacity for each one of these. Okay. Um, and as Fahad mentioned, you know, these systems come with three year uh, warranty. Um, actually with CompuVerd, uh, the software, it's a perpetual license. So this is the beauty of software defined storage actually, is that, you know, you're not uh, buying something that you have to rip and replace, you know, in a few years. Uh, the software is yours, you know, it's a perpetual license. Uh, you know, you own it and you just pay maintenance um, on that. Uh, because you can scale uh, much more easily, you can have the disks that you need, uh, you know, allowing you to move only at the appropriate speed. So we all know that in storage projects, oftentimes there's miscalculations. You know, I, I predict that I'm going to be at this level, but I either I'm under or I'm over. Uh, and, uh, you know, I'm not using my, uh, my budget efficiently. So, uh, this is another advantage, um, uh, to, uh, you know, to software defined storage approach. So, um, I think those, those were the two, uh, the two that we're working on that we have at the moment, you know, I can share brochures with everyone, uh, after the call, uh, you know, next step for us is to build, you know, with super micro, we're going to also set up some standard systems that you would want to see in a hyper-converge uh, scenario, you know, most likely in a 2U form factor, uh, because most, uh, you know, most of the hyper-converge solutions, they do come in a, uh, in a 2U four-node form factor, okay? So um, I think with that said, you know, there's a couple of questions that uh, were asked in the, in the call, um, you know, and maybe, uh, Sandusha, you can help me with, uh, uh, with these. So um, one of the questions was, how do you compare with, uh, with Nutanix? So we'll, uh, we can address that one first. Um, you know, Nutanix is one of many, actually, solutions that are out there in terms of hyperconverged. You know, they're a very solid um, solution that's built a, uh, you know, quite a good, good reputation. And, uh, you know, they are very easy and simple appliance based approach. Whereas, you know, you get, you know, Tannix, it's up and running and it's very rich in terms of, of bells and whistles, you know, uh, we can achieve the same, you know, as far as, as far as giving you a hyper converge, uh, solution, uh, you know, providing the uh, predictable IOPS that, you know, that are needed and, you know, through such a solution, providing good performance. Um, you know, there may be differences in, in terms of uh, bells and whistles and features. Uh, but, you know, the, the biggest difference is that our solution is something that we package. You know, we, we, we allow you to choose the commodity hardware and combine it with the software, whereas, you know, their solution is, uh, is already prepackaged uh, and, and um, you know, ready, ready to go. But, you know, as you can see with these systems, we're trying to make it as out of the box as, uh, as possible. Uh, Sindusha, did you want to add anything to that question? Uh, well, I can fill in there. Chris, uh, yeah. So, uh, you pretty much covered it, uh, Omar, and the most important thing is to, uh, to be aware of is that CompuWord is software only, so you could do it with your existing hardware if you want to. And then, of course, the ease of use, as Sindusha uh, showed earlier, and uh, and not to mention we customize all the solutions so if you need a, a certain amount of storage then we we will do that and we will tell tailor made both the solution and the price that so that it'll fit you yeah so you know in terms of also the hardware components that are going to affect the performance you know if you want to go beyond you know uh you know, I guess what, what this gives you is the flexibility of choosing, you know, how aggressive you want to get, you know, or if you want to take it down a notch and not be as, as aggressive, uh, you know, certain components, you know, will, uh, will definitely uh, factor into the cost of the, of the complete system, you know, certain hardware components. Also, uh, a, a chat message just came up here about deduplication and compression. So, in terms of uh, compression, we will implement LC4 comp uh, compression uh, later on. Uh, as in terms of uh, dedupe, we are not sure because dedupe fits basically only in one 
scenario which you have a, a VDA environment and which all the workers are having pretty much the same setup. So uh, yeah, we're not sure about that. But compression LC4 will be uh, implemented uh, during, uh, well, late Q2 or Q3. Uh, you can achieve uh, most of it by using um, erasure coding and compression is you won't save that much in terms if you're doing, for instance, video. Uh, and the, the benefit of using erasure coding is that the performance will not uh, decrease as it will if you're doing a, a dedupe or compression. So I okay. hope that was answered to, to the question. Okay, the, the other question that I see here is uh, uh, a question about monitoring. Uh, I think it's uh, what the person is trying to ask is if it's uh, possible to monitor using uh, Nagios or Zabbix. Any idea on that? Uh, uh, so those are, I believe, open source monitoring um, uh, softwares. I, I'm not sure. I know that uh, I think it's Zabbix that are going to save it in Hanover and uh, we are also there so we could have a chat with them and see if we can uh, do something there but for the moment I couldn't tell you but I'll be happy to find out. Yeah and actually for me it's the first time I hear about that scenario so I, I would love to learn more about you know what's the, what the intention is behind uh, using that kind of solution. Um, are there any other questions? Uh, those are the only questions that I see at the moment. Okay, so I think, uh, you know, that's, uh, I think, I, I hope everyone enjoyed the, uh, the webinar. Uh, you know, I hope it was uh, useful and provided a different way of looking at things and potentially, you know, if, uh, if you guys are looking at storage in the future, you can uh, assess the solution. Um, very important thing, you know, to note is that you know, uh, if you if you want, you can test the super the um, the CompuVert uh, solution. They actually do offer 20 TB of you know free of charge. So today you can go and get a 20 TB uh, license of CompuVert and test it out. And uh, the other thing I wanted to mention is uh, that we will likely be doing an event. Uh, in, the, in early May, uh, we haven't confirmed the date yet, but uh, we will be announcing an event with, uh, with CompuVert in, uh, in early May. And uh, hopefully we will get to see some of you in, in person. The event will be actually in, in UAE. It'll be our first event in the region. Um, so hopefully uh, some of you will be able to make it. Um, so with that said, I think uh, that's it for, for, from our side. Uh, Chris, anything else from your end? Uh, nope. Uh, just a quick reminder to um, to f do please do fill out the poll that's uh, embedded in the uh, in the webinar. And uh, as Indusha mentioned before, uh, please do follow us on LinkedIn to to get uh, frequent updates on uh, what's hot and what's not and what's coming. Yeah. And if anyone needs any more any further information, please feel free to you know to touch base, and we'll be able to do a a one on one session with you all. Um, so thank you very much and uh, hope to uh, speak with you guys soon. Thank you. Thank you. Bye-bye. Thank you. Bye-bye. Thank you, Omar. Bye-bye. Thank you, everyone. Thanks. Bye.